I don't hate it, but I don't love it. I wouldn't put it together and I think we can do better for the price. In today's video, I will pick one of my subscribers gaming PC build list and I will put it together again and give you a better price to performance gaming PC. My name is Valentino. This is a boost my build video and this video idea comes from Jason from the PC Builder YouTube channel. So big shout out to him. And if you want to get featured in the next video, then follow the instructions down below in the video description. With that being said, let's start. So we got Paul here who says, hi Shadow, I hope you're good. I don't really know if my PC build will be good. Please have a look at it. I mainly play games like Apex Legends, Rocket League and a bit of Warzone. I will be only gaming with it in 1080p most of the time on medium to high settings. I don't want to waste my money on aesthetics. It should be a pure performance PC. My budget is about 800 to 900 USD without the monitor. Please help me. So let's take a look at your build. Okay, so you went with this system and honestly, I don't hate it, but I don't love it. I wouldn't put it together and I think we can do better for the price. So you went with the Ryzen 7 5700X 3D, which is an amazing CPU, but I wouldn't buy this CPU on a new gaming PC. If you are already on the AM4 platform, which means that you already have a system with a motherboard from the AM4 platform, then great, you can upgrade to a Ryzen 7 5700X 3D. But if you're going to buy a brand new system, I think we can get a new platform in the AM5 platform and get a more upgradable system over time that is going to perform great right now as well. So I don't hate the CPU choice, but I do not love it either. Then you went with an aftermarket CPU cooler, which is a great cooler in my opinion. But I think we can do much better with a more power efficient CPU that doesn't require a ton of cooling. So we allocate that money into the GPU, which is the most important component. And for the GPU, you went with the RX 6650 XT, which is a nice graphics card, but not at this price point. I would get the 6650 XT for a $750 PC, not anything more than that. I think it's more of a budget graphics card, so we can do better in this regard as well and get a much higher level of performance. Then you went with 16 gigs of RAM, which is not ideal at this price point. Honestly, I would pick 32 gigs of RAM. It's not that much more expensive. And if you want to do streaming, content creation and other tasks, it's going to be helpful. And then the motherboard choice is what's throwing me off the B450M Pro 4 Micro ATX motherboard. This is a budget motherboard and the Ryzen 7 5700X 3D is one of the fastest CPUs from the AM4 platform. So you are putting a very budget motherboard with a high-end CPU from the same platform. So I wouldn't recommend you doing this, especially since you don't get enough features. Now, you went with a one terabyte Gen 3 SSD, which is totally fine, but in my opinion, it's a bit overpriced at $62. I think we can go with Gen 4 SSD for around the same price. And then you did some good stuff here with the case. I, I built a system around the Montec Air 100 ARGB with four pre-installed fans. I think it's amazing, honestly. So the case choice is great. And also the power supply choice is very solid, but I couldn't find this power supply at $70 so when I boosted this PC I went with a different power supply just because I couldn't find this one at this price point. The total price for the system that you went with is 860 bucks which is okay but I think we can do so much better for the price and you said you can go up to 900 bucks so I think we can do much better and get a much higher performance in Apex Legends Rocket League and Warzone. And I'm going to give you two boosted builds. The first one being this one, which is the most expensive one and the one I recommend you buying. Yes, it's a bit over budget at 930 bucks. And if you're not willing to go that far, I'm going to give you a second option in a little bit. But for this system, you get a Ryzen 5 76 with which is going to perform very similar in terms of gaming to the Ryzen 7 that you were going with. But the main difference here is that you are on the AM5 platform, which means that if you want to upgrade to the fastest CPU in the market right now, the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, you can upgrade without having to change the motherboard. The Ryzen 7 5700X 3D was kind of the end of the lineup, so you will not be able to upgrade any further in terms of gaming performance, but here you get a much more upgradable path. And not only that, you get 32 gigs of DDR5 memory, 6000 megahertz CL30 timings, which is going to be amazing for esports games. And also, as I said before, it's going to be ideal if you want to do streaming or other tasks. Then I went with a one terabyte Gen 4 SSD for a cheaper price in the Kingston NV2. Great drive, honestly, for gaming as well. There's no difference between Gen 3 and Gen 4 for gaming, and this one is cheaper, so you might as well just go with this one. And then I went with a B650 motherboard from MSI. This one is kind of a budget motherboard, but not as budget as the B450 motherboard that you were going with. And then I kept your case because I do love it, actually. I really like the choice there. Plenty of airflow. And then I went with a 650 watt 80 plus bronze power supply from MSI because 
as I said before, I couldn't find the Seasonic power supply that you went with with the other system. The main difference here is the graphics card, which is the most important component when it comes to gaming performance. And I went with the RX 6750 XT, which is about 20 to 30 percent faster in terms of performance than the 6650 XT. Not only that, but here you get 12 gigs of VRAM, making it not only a great choice for 1080p Ultra, but you can also upgrade to a 1440p monitor down the line and take advantage of it because the 6750 XT is a 1080p Ultra slash 1440p high gaming graphics card. Now, in terms of the exact performance in one of the latest tests from TechSpot, in high demanding titles on high to ultra settings at 1080p, you can see here your RX 6650 XT was able to average 85 FPS, which is a really good number considering we are talking about games like Howard's Legacy and Cyberpunk 2077 on high to ultra settings. But then you see the RX 6700 XT, which is slightly slower than the 6750 XT, so you can expect a closer level of performance to a 4060 Ti, which is about 110 FPS on average. So that's almost 30 FPS more on average than the graphics card that you were going with, which is a huge gaming performance improvement over the 6650 XT. That being said, AMD works better with games like Warzone, so you can expect way higher frame rates than 100 FPS in the games that you are going to play, especially in Rocket League and Apex Legends, where you can expect 300 plus FPS on average depending on the settings. So if you want a 240 hertz 1080p monitor or even a 360 hertz one, feel free to buy one and take full advantage of it because this system is definitely capable of handling a monitor like that. And as I said before, this PC is a bit over your budget. That's why I also went with another one, which is basically the same system, but you get the RTX 4060 instead of the 6750 XT. The 4060 is a still better than the 6650 XT on average for gaming with an average of 91 FPS compared to 85, which is slightly better, not that much better, but it's slightly better. And then you are still under $900. Now, I do recommend you're going with the 6750 XT and spending the extra, especially since you get a much better performance. But if you really want a system under 900 bucks, then this one is still a great option. And I tested this PC myself with the Ryzen 5 7600 and the RTX 4060 in different titles. So if you want to see the level of performance that you can get with this exact system, and you will have that video in the top right of the screen. And if you need personal PC help and you want me to take a look at your specific needs and your budget, in the top link in the description, you can get free personal PC help and you can also follow the instructions to get featured in the next Boost My Build video. If you like the video, hit the like button and subscribe. Trust me, it goes a long way. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you on the next one.